Hey guys, Dustin here. Welcome to another episode of Horroritis. This week we're going to do another request, and this one comes from 1936, and it's Dracula's Daughter. So this movie basically picks up at the end of your standard Dracula story. Uh, Van Helsing is actually being arrested for the murder of two men, which just happened to be Count Dracula and Renfield. Do you know anything about this? Yes, I did it. Now, the police, not believing in vampires, believe that Van Helsing has just committed a double murder, so they haul them off, and they take the bodies away, too. And then, a little bit later, you see a mysterious woman, and at this point, we don't know who she is. She later shows up at the police station, mesmerizes the police guard, and steals Dracula's body, and then we see her in the woods, burning it, and doing, like, a little farewell ceremony. Unto Adonai and Azrael, and to the keeping of the laws of the flame and lower pits, I consign this body to be forevermore consumed in this purging fire. We learn then that she is actually affected by the same curse that made Dracula what he was, and she is trying to get rid of it. Now that she thinks Dracula is dead, she's burnt his body, she thinks that maybe she can go back to leading a normal life. Even though her assistant or caretaker or manslave or whatever he is doesn't really seem like he's into the idea a whole lot. Sander, look at me. What do you see in my eyes? Death. Eventually, this woman that we come to know as the Countess meets a man named Jeffrey Garth. Jeffrey Garth just happens to be a former student of Van Helsing, who Van Helsing has contacted to help him uh, win a court case and get out of a dumb homicide. Only problem with that is Garth is not a lawyer, he's a psychiatrist. Or a psychologist. I can never remember the difference. So once the Countess has moved into London and she meets Jeffrey Garth and hears him speaking about Dr. Van Helsing and psychosis and fixing the mind, she believes that he can help her uh, overcome her vampirism by fixing her mind in some way. Release? Yes, release. Sympathetic treatment will release the human mind from any obsession. He, of course, thinks that she has like some crazy alcohol addiction or some other normal psychosis and of course he doesn't believe in vampires just like nobody else believes in vampires however things tend to get worse when she develops this sort of infatuation with him and is determined that he's going to be by her side until he fixes her remain yes with me among the undead one yourself as only i can make that possible so a couple things about this movie now, on first glance, people are going to look at it and be like, black and white? No, no thank you. But that's BS, because just because it's black and white doesn't mean it's a bad movie. And I know a lot of people feel that way about black and white movies, but what they fail to understand is that black and white movies were there before the crap that they're watching now. Without these classics from the 1920s and 1930s, we wouldn't have the stuff we have now. Nobody would have paved the way. And even though this movie doesn't have, like, the big name old school stars like Lugosi or Lon Chaney Jr. or, you know, Boris Karloff, this movie is still worth watching. This movie still has the same feel as those other classics that we come to know and come to uh, pay proper respect to. This movie has the same feel. This movie is very watchable, beginning to end. It's very enjoyable. And this movie deserves the same respect as those other classics. So don't count it out just because it's old and it's black and white. So that's my video for Dracula's Daughter. I strongly encourage you to watch this if you haven't seen it already. And if you have seen it, go back and watch it again because the classics, they get old, but they never get stale. So if you like this video, hit that like button, share it to your friends, get the word out. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't hit it already. You can get me in the comments below, and while you're there, leave me a comment about what your favorite black and white horror movie is. You can also get me personally at Facebook and Twitter, both at The Horroritis. You'll find those links in the description below. Also in the description, you'll find a link to the Patreon page. Go there, check that out if you want. And as always, I'm Dustin. 
This was Horroritis, and until next time. So, Doctor, how would you like to go back to the zoo and find a nice empty cage?